Good evening, I'm Keisha Butts with a CTV News update. Topping our news tonight, deadly floods tear through an apartment complex in Rockville, leaving scores of people without a home and one man dead. Byron Scott has our story. It happened in the middle of the night. Flood waters filling low-lying apartments, destroying everything inside. And I saw um, that people that it was flooded there and that people were screaming. So then I came out and I saw that the, the glass was um, breaking and people were running all over the place screaming help. 150 people were displaced. A 19-year-old male was killed. One other person is still unaccounted for. It happened during the early morning storms in Rock Creek Woods Apartments in Rockville. You expect these things happen in Florida. You hear all these things going on in the hurricane areas. But not in Pembroke Parkway, not in Rockville. This is Jose Alonzo. He says flood waters burst into his apartment unit, waking him up at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Crews had to rescue him by boat. Many people lost everything. For Adriana Gallegos, who lives in one of the higher units that did not get flooded out, it was terrifying. I was scared because this never happened here before. Gallegos is worried for a schoolmate who lives in one of the lower units. 50 apartments in all were impacted. 12 were flooded out. You've seen her since this happened? Yeah. Okay, she's o is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. okay. You know, I have a, a child, a handicapped child. If it wasn't my other side, I would be scared to death because how you get a handicapped child out in the middle of the night? You know what I mean? I mean, it's just too scary, too close to home, and too, it's too scary. Byron Scott, CTV News. Displaced residents were taken to the Mid County Rec Center on Queens Guard Road. A tornado watch is in effect for more than a dozen Maryland counties, including Prince George's. The watch is in effect until 7 p.m. The National Weather Service has also issued a flash flood watch for the region. Meteorologists are concerned that the remnants of Hurricane Ida will result in flooding in some areas. Several school systems, including Baltimore City, Montgomery and Howard counties, closed early today because of possible hazardous weather. Ten Marylanders have died of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. That's according to the state's health department. The agency today reports more than 1,300 new COVID-19 cases. This brings the state's total coronavirus cases to more than 498,000. The state's positivity rate is at 4.99%. Maryland Congressman Anthony Brown has released a statement regarding the end of the war in Afghanistan. Brown, an Army veteran who served in Iraq, is a member of the House Armed Services Committee. His statement reads in part, quote, After two decades of war, thousands of American and Afghan lives lost and trillions of dollars. It was time to bring our mission in Afghanistan to a close. Brown says the U.S. must ensure that every American and Afghan partner wishing to leave the country do so safely and utilize every diplomatic tool and channel available to get them out. You're watching CTV News. I'm Keisha Butts. Coming up, a look at Maryland politics. Gubernatorial candidate Tom Perez picks up some labor support in Prince George's County. That story and more after the break. They took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. During high school, I hung with the wrong crowd, and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways, like all fathers do, because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually, once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He 
was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers, he connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him, and of course, it meant so much to us too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. A major endorsement from labor unions for gubernatorial candidate Tom Perez. Unions representing tens of thousands of workers across Maryland are voicing their support for Democrat Tom Perez for the state's top job. Perez spoke about the endorsements this morning in Landover. Long before COVID-19 uh, uh, reared its ugly head on the world stage, we had friends in public service that knew how essential their work truly was and knew how essential their contribution to their, their communities and to their families and to their country truly are. And so it is a great, great pleasure of mine uh, to introduce a man that is going to be the next governor of the state of Maryland who has known that working families are heroes and essential long before there was a global pandemic. Who are these remarkably indispensable friends of mine? They are the people who've kept our grocery stores open, literally risking their lives every single day so we could eat. They are our nurses, our social workers, our psych psychiatric counselors, our other healthcare workers. And I am so proud today to be at your side. And I'm honored and humbled to have the support of 10 unions representing over 40,000 households here in Maryland. The primary election takes place on June 28th, 2022. Early voting will take place from June 16th through the 23rd. As we reported yesterday, former County Executive Rashern Baker received a major endorsement from nine of 11 council members in his quest for the governor's seat. Baker spoke with reporters afterward about his time during the pandemic when he was the primary caregiver for his wife. Krista Baker was first diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's in 2010. I was at home during this pandemic with my wife. It was the first time that it was just the two of us, no one leaving the house uh, for three months. Because of her condition, I couldn't afford to have anything happen with, um, with getting COVID because she is not at a stage where she could recover from that. But it made me think about how blessed I am and the health care I get. When she was sick during that COVID and I needed to go to the hospital, I knew who to call. That's not the case around the rest of the state. I saw that when I sat on the UMS board for the three years I sat on that board of healthcare across the state of Maryland. And it's one of the things that my wife and I talked about and the kids that, you know, we've been given a lot and it would be selfish of us to take this and not try and get back. Baker's wife was only 48 years old when she was first diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Police are investigating a fatal shooting in Tacoma Park. Officers responded to the 6300 block of New Hampshire Avenue last night around 8 p.m. They found 39-year-old Louise Perez of Washington, D.C. in a stairwell suffering from gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Anyone with information on this shooting is asked to call Crime Solvers at 1-866-411-TIPS. Well, he was a longtime public servant in the region. William Goddard III, commonly known as Bill, passed away today. He was deputy fire chief in Prince George's County, the fire chief in Howard County, and a top official with the Maryland Department of Transportation. The Navy veteran also spent many years with the city of Laurel, including a stint as city administrator up until his retirement last July. Goddard, Goddard is survived by his wife and five children. With the new school year approaching, the county's library system wants parents and students to know it's available for help. It has several free resources available online for students, including bilingual live tutoring, test prep, and research databases. There are even learning activities for children between the ages of two and eight. The library system also has services for teachers. All of these resources are available 100% free through the library. There's also a really great service that we offer called Assignment Alerts, where educators can get um, 
tips about resources that can help them fill out their lesson plans. And additionally, uh, educators and homeschool educators can come to us and say, hey, I would like to do a one-on-one -on -one session with a library staff member to learn about exactly what resources I can use for this class or this purpose or this age group. All Prince George's County public school kids have automatic access to these services. Meantime, the library system is offering patrons Chromebooks with built-in internet. And still ahead on CTV News tonight, we check in with our pet of the week. Stay with us. Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. You can always find people who are helping. Thank you to all the first responders who put their lives in danger to help us when my brothers and sisters and mom and dad and grandpa and grandma need them. Thank you, first responders. We look out for the helpers because they look out for us. At the end of the day, uh, this is what I signed up for as a first responder, and this is what I love to do. And I'm going to continue going to work day in and day out and providing help to those that need it. Look after yourself and look after one another. Thanks. Thank you for staying with us. A Maryland school district says high school athletes will have to roll up their sleeves and get vaccinated. The Baltimore City public school system is requiring all student athletes who participate in winter and spring sports to be fully vaccinated before the start of their season. This means that teens planning to play winter sports will have to be vaccinated by November 1st. In other news, Maryland's Go Vax Summer Tour will be hitting the road to vaccinate residents this Labor Day week. Weekend. A mobile clinic will be stationed at the Sandy Point State Park this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, September 6. The clinic will be open from 9 in the morning until 4 p.m. Visitors at the Maryland State Fairgrounds and the Maryland Renaissance Festival will also have an opportunity to, opportunity to receive the shots this Labor Day weekend. For more information, visit governor.maryland.gov backslash govax mobile. Let's get a quick check on our on our pet of the week. Take a look at this adorable kitten who doesn't have a name yet. He's looking for his forever home and would love to become another member of your family. He's a two month old brown tabby domestic short hair. Rescue coordinator Megan Staub says he's friendly, loves attention and will play with anyone. Since he is rambunctious and full of energy, he would be good with other little kids. He would be good with teenagers, he would be good with probably other cats as long as they accept him. Um, he might even be good with dogs. It just might take him a little bit to get used to something like that. If you'd like to adopt this cute kitten, call Animal Management at 301-780-7200. Well, let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. The flash flood watch is in effect for our area through Thursday morning. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a high near 78. Friday, sunny with a high near 77. Saturday, sunny with a high near 80. And now for the community calendar, get ready for the big bounce. Bring your little ones out to the largest touring inflatable event featuring the nation's largest bounce house, airspace, and the new sports slam attraction. The Big Bounce America event will be held for the next two weekends starting Friday, September 3rd until Sunday, September 12th at the Fort Washington's Rosecroft Raceway. For tickets and information, visit thebigbounceamerica.com. And that's your CTV News Update. I'm Keisha Butts. Have a good night. As they head toward the finish, Warren has built a substantial lead and headed for her fourth gold medal. She's ahead of the world record pace by at least half a second, and she... Oh, wait, wait, what's she doing? She... I think she's doing a headstand. Why would she do that? She's stopping. She just, she stopped. I've never seen she, she was so close like to this. the finish, and she stopped. I, mean, this I don't is, know what this she's is thinking. Unbelievable.